everyone, welcome to a game called For the People. The developers, 101XP, reached out to me and they gave me a copy, as well as a second copy, to give away to you guys. The game comes out on the 13th of August, so very, very soon. Make sure you wishlist it on Steam. Definitely do that. There's a link down in the description. Very first link. You got it. You can do this. I believe in you. Let's play the game. Corvin Empire that had exploited working people fell and gave a chance for a better future for all common people all over the world, regardless of their gender, skin color, and social status. That's nice. We believe that the whole world would follow us, but our hopes for a world revolution and a brighter future were not to come true. We were alone. 1988. All these years, the country was wisely guided by our commune working party, Comrade Joseph Steele, the General Secretary of the CUWP, and the Chairman of the Supreme Council of the Union of Communes, has ruled our state for the last 15 years. It was a surprise for all of us when an anniversary of his election to this post during the 20th Party Congress, he announced the appointment of Comrade Guy Dare, a young and energetic reformer, as the Chairman of the Communion executive community. I will never forget Comrade Steele's face staring at me from the photo in a newspaper. It was like he was looking into my soul. We were all covered by the feeling of changes as we had to get through, but I, what, did I read that right? We were all covered by the feeling of changes we had to get through, but I could not even guess how quickly I would be dragged into what was happening. Ah, okay, gotcha. My name is Francis River. I'm 26. I graduated with honors from Corbinton University of Management and National Economy, and after that, I joined CUWP, where I've been an active member of Altstad's department for the last three years. Cool. Cool. The phone rang suddenly on the evening of September 11th. The Central Committee of the CUWP called me. I was told that according to the new course policy, I got into the staff rotation program as a worthy CUWP member and an outstanding alumnus alumni? I don't know how to say that word, honestly. I'm not dumb, I swear! Just on certain topics, okay? Of Corvin Corvinton Institute. That's how I found myself in Iron One. This is cool. This is cool. I like this. Iron One was founded in Corvin Empire in 1888 near the Wolfram Deposits. It's been known as Black Month then. It was a smaller miner's town, which our glorious Orange Revolution turned into a leading industrial city with almost 50,000 citizens. Almost half of them are representatives of the Kent people. Others are Corvanian. Okay. I was appointed as the head of the city committee. I've become the ruler of this town. I have to move to my new office today. Wednesday, 14th of September. Why do I have two phones? Comrade River, Colonel old John Chester came to visit you. Yes, thank you. Invite him inside, please. Okay. I have a stamp. I have a stamp! I have a stamp. You want a stamp? You want a stamp right on your forehead right here? I'm glad to meet you at last, Comrade Francis River. Good morning, Comrade Colonel. Take a seat, please. Would you like a cigarette? Gross. Smoking. Yuck. Don't do it, kids. Much obliged. And it's cozy here. None of what I got. All the dozens of posters, hundreds of handbooks, thousands of regulations. I always thought it was like that only in the army. I sympathize, that is. Yep, but you're the one who deserves sympathy here. What do you think so? You were assigned to a real nest of vipers full of slippery, servile, greedy, for benefits, po proletarians. I'm afraid you're going a bit too far. Our country is founded on the principle of defending the proletarians, proletariat's happiness. Our country was created for the happiness of all. But in Iron One, workers want to be happier than the rest, at the expense of you and me as well. 
Colonel, I hope that it only appeared to me that important business you want to discuss. Just idle reflections on people's happiness. Yeah, you run a tight ship. Of course, I remember about business. I was hinting at it. Okay. The thing is that workers in our country are hogging the covers, and their demands for medical insurance don't take into account harmonious existence with other strata of our society. They don't take us into account. The police need to support the city committee, and if you don't forget us in such a deplorable situation, we in turn won't forget you. Um... Comrade Colonel, I'm afraid I don't share your dramatic vision of the situation, at least until I get to know the situation in the city a little better. Do you consider me a liar, Comrade River? I meant that. I understood what you meant perfectly. To portray the head of police. The police! A liar. You will live to regret your decision. Wow, that's dramatic. <laughs> Jesus. We're just like, yo, Buenos Dias. He's like, hey, do me some solids. And you're like, hmm, can I reassess? And he's like, me, a liar! <laughs> Get out. <laughs> Take a stamp. Respond to official appeals from citizens and city services. Okay, urgently, top secret, code orange. I hope my letter won't be intercepted. Comrade head of the city, I believe you understand this document will not fall into their hands. You may ask who are they. Oh, so far they don't get to me. I can report you. What? <laughs> Our glorious city became a seat of a conspiracy conspiratorial unit of capitalists is it just me or is this like typewriter type really hard to read <laughs> it's it's always been hard for me to read this this kind of text uh capitalists and their sympathizers this filthy sect that glorifies the prophet is based at the address proletarian strength street building five once i've seen them handing out banned books to children and showing them pictures that besmirch our union hurry up we must not delay otherwise they will corrupt the city from within what what nonsense is this yeah what nonsense is this who are they trash it Later, you were told that a small charity that buys books from children from the orphanage of Iron One is located at the address pointed by Comrade Madstain. Not a capitalist unit. Yeah. Cool. Oh, was there more to, like, scroll through? No, I guess not. Alright, so next one, I guess. I wish you a long life. My name is Marison. Mark Marison. My parents are the distinguished first category engineers. I followed in their footsteps and have worked at Wolfram Plant for 10 years, so I earned an apartment in a good district. Yes, I am used to speaking honestly and plainly because I am not afraid of my words. That's why I'm writing this. It has been long clear for me that the plant that ensures life in Iron One strangles it at the same time. Of course, we can't just close it. People need work, but we can control the waste and discharged the waste discharged into the city water reservoirs. The river is spoiled, but at least it is running but the waste is now discharged into the pond our pond it's absolutely unprecedented they discharge tanks of shit at night and think that they were not uncovered yes of course what kind of fools they think we are i used to admire the pond almost every morning the swans used to live there now it hurts to look at this puddle that is unacceptable even for frogs Send the inspection to the plant or do something else, but make the administration reflect on the consequences of their deeds. I count on you. Yours faithfully, Mark Mayerson. Okay. Um. Yeah, I should handle it. Don't put waste in ponds. What's wrong with you? What? Why? Why do they discharge waste in the pond? I should handle it immediately. You decided to stop this ecological mess. The internal investigation on the plant showed that the dumping of hazardous chemicals to the pond was an individual initiative of one of the middle-level employees. You heard a rumor about testing of water in the river. Such a decision doesn't look like the one 
look at the ones that may be taken on the middle level, but you have no evidence for the opposite. One way or another, the pond is saved. Probably after some time, it will regenerate and the swans will live there again. So he's just the fall guy. Sad face. Comrade River, I write to you with great sorrow. Yesterday, a band... Okay, sorry, I was reading this. <laughs> a band of young Kentish attacked my granddad. These scoundrels beat him nearly to death. I confess my granddad could somehow offend them. He's an old school Corvinium and doesn't always watch his tongue, but this... But is it a reason to break his fingers and smash his face? I filled a report with the Integrity Division, but they denied it. Perhaps they are afraid of this accident, afraid of ethic, ethnic tensions or something like that. I beg you, for my troublesome granddad, find the perpetrators. It cannot be forgiven. Minus a thousand. Uh, what is this, my, my coin? Neither I want... Must find and punish these scoundrels immediately. It seems the common marker is responsible for the incitement of the ethnic hatred himself, and it shouldn't be forgiven. Hmm. Just because you disagree with someone, or you really, really disagree with someone, you shouldn't hit them. That's pathetic. You're pathetic if you hit people. <laughs> Neither I want to be a part of it. But I should help the granddad. He deserves quality treatment in the regional hospital. Hmm. I have the money for it. Here you go, granddad. Comrade Marbury went to recover in the special hospital. It should have a positive effect on his health. Joanna is very grateful to you. Well, hopefully that doesn't come to bite me in the focus. We would like to inform you that the first experimental elections to the municipal self-government bodies are to be held as part of the implementation of Comrade Steele's new course. The success or failure of this event will determine the elections on other levels as well. Of course, only approved candidates should be allowed to participate. There should not be any dissidents, any people with tainted bloodlines. We do not need any black guard descendants in power. However, it should be noted that this is strictly recommended not to appoint party officials or prominent social activists as alternative candidates. We therefore encourage you to arrange a search, selection, and training of the citizens who meet our requirements. Their task is to become candidates, actively run their campaigns, and lose with honor in case of failure. Open disrespect to the authorities and throwing a match are equally unacceptable. This task can be carried out by ourselves, but as the head of the city, you're much more informed and have ample room for, to maneuver. You have more than enough time. The party says, you have to. So Frank says, yes. Uh, I don't know like this idea. I don't want to be part of one of the people who supported it, just in case. You were prudent not to make any moves. Anyway, who would question your actions? Me. Me, I question my actions. Is that it? Hello? Head of the committee, Francis River, on the line. Hello, Comrade River. This is Jack Chester, the head of the Klaus Wolfram Metallurgical Plant. Hello, Comrade Chester. Glad to meet you. And I'm so glad. Congratulations on your appointment as the head of the city committee. Can you spare a minute? Certainly. Go ahead. Comrade River, I got a call from the regional committee. They asked to convey that since you are now the head of, the, of our glorious city... You need to speak to the workers of the plant. It's strange. Why did they call you, not me? Apparently, they decided to contact me directly so that I could take on the organization immediately. I'll pick you up tonight at about 7 o'clock. Looks like I don't exactly have a choice. I'll be waiting for you, Comrade Chester. Goodbye, Comrade River. Okay. Day is over. You may leave. Well, what is this? What is this? Colonel Sylvester Bayer. Carl Beckett. Colonel John Chester. Jack Reed. Jack Chester. John Kipler? I don't know what this is. Click. And what's this? The Iron Herald. The city committee works for the good of working people. 
Uh, on September 12, 1988, the Iron One City Committee was headed by Comrade Francis River. On the same day, the new head of the city began to serve by the sweat of his brow. We became aware that on his first working day, Comrade River began to study the history of our city, approved the draft of the new guide for tourists arriving in Iron One for recre recreation in the unique Orange Resort, and also came to grips with other citizens' problems. New head of city committee. Health insurance is a gift for workers. Latest and most important achievement of the retired head of the city, Comrade Lebowski, is the introduction of the new health insurance package for the workers of the Klaus Wolfram Metallurgical Plant. Comrade Jack Chester, the director of the plant, talks about the advantages of this innovation in the interview published on page 14. Comrade Harry Nixon. And oh, so this was the 13th. This is the paper from the 13th. All right, good to know. Can I click on any of this other stuff? What is this? Attitude to the city committee and the budget. Miners district, Wolfram district, Orion's district, Bazaar's district. 40% overall. Is that what that is? Minus 19 on this flag? What is the flag? What? Is it because I upset that police dude? Probably. And toasty warm. Okay, sorry. Frank, good evening, Comrade Chester. Hello, Frank. Oh, are we Frank? We're Frank. Chester. Yes, it's a really great evening, Comrade Head of the City Committee. How do you feel about your new post? I need some time to settle into it. I feel like a stranger here. Well, Francis, it all goes away. Have you prepared a speech? Yes, to say the truth, I'm a little worried. I've never had a chance to perform in public. Never mind, they're just workers. Actually, they don't care about your speech. Then why am I doing it? Then what's all this for? A mere formality, but it's important. Well, it seems we've already arrived. I didn't prepare a speech. I didn't have time. You called me like two hours ago and you're like, yo, I'll pick you up at seven. Be ready. <laughs> what? How? After you, Francis. After you. My dear uh, uh, comrades, proletarians, I'm I'm glad to be with you today to see your bright faces. Your hard work is the pride not only of our city, but also the entire union of peoples' orange communes. I swear in front of all people gathered here to fulfill my duty to the citizens of Iron One and to work so that the party will be proud of the results as much as it is proud of you. Thank you, comrades. Great speech, Francis. We are worrying about nothing. Now it's my turn. Walter Weiss. Comrade River, Comrade River, I need to talk to you urgently. What's up, friend? Hello, and who are you? My name is Walter Weiss. I am a workers' union rep. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Comrade River. We have a difficult situation on the plant. It's caused by medical insurance reform. Why do you think so? Your predecessor, Comrade Lebowski, never gave us any answer. This is my third day here, Comrade Weiss. And that is why we decided to meet you personally. We ask you to review the reform. Uh, okay. Comrade Bryce, I'm sorry, but we have to go now. I'm sure he'll get it all sort get it sorted out the other day what the other day okay oh okay there we go hmm suspicious there's d 15th of september what do you want 
Good morning, Francis. Good morning, Helen. Helen! Meetings with the head of city departments are scheduled for today. Lieutenant Colonel Bayer from the fire department has already arrived. Well, let him in. Get your butt out of my office, freak. Comrade Fever, good morning. And good morning to you, Comrade Lieutenant Colonel. Sylvester Bayer. In order not to waste neither your nor my time, I will get straight to the point. Firefighters in our city are in an acute need of practically everything. There's only a handful of cars in working condition. That's no good. My people drive to the calls, praying to at least get to the place of the incident. If a serious fire really were to happen in the city, we wouldn't be able to cope with it. It would be lucky if we at least can contain it. We've got barely enough money for salaries and social security. I hope that I clearly conveyed the seriousness of the situation and you will take it into account when allocating budgets. I really hope that I will be able to help you. You must understand that I have to hear everyone else as well to have a clear picture of the situation in the city. Well, I have great respect for firefighters, so <laughs> I'm a little bit like swayed. I want to help people. The situation in the city. The situation is that there is that here is located one of the largest metallurgical plants in the country, which equipment wear and tear doesn't reduce the risk of fire. I won't be able to cope with the fire in such a huge, decrepit enterprise. You're men from far off shores, but I think you're able to access the scale of the disaster if the whole city will suddenly be out of work. I share your concern, but the situation is complicated, not only for you, so I will not give you permanent premature promises. Copy that. I'll wait for your final decision. Goodbye, Comrade River. Goodbye, Comrade Bear. Bye-bye, friend. I'll do what I can for you. Oh! Helen! Comrade River, Carl Backett, the chief doctor of the First City Hospital, is awaiting his reception. Let him in, Helen. Hang it up. Come here. Carl Backett. Afternoon, Comrade... Uh, but good afternoon, Comrade River. Good afternoon, Comrade Backett. Back it out of this office. Ha ha ha. You can call me Carl. I really don't like all these formalities. Excuse me, Comrade Backett, but I'm probably young enough to be your son. Well, as you wish, I hope that in the future we'll be able to overcome these <clears throat> prejudices. It's just respect, Comrade Backett. Nothing more. Respect to you and your profession. Oh, I could go for hours talking about how respect is earned by deeds and not by age. But I'm afraid we've got business to talk. I'm listening to you, Cameron Beckett. I like you. You will probably be surprised, but I will not try to beg for funding. I'm talking about troubles and hardships. Although dramatizing is an old habit of the heads of the departments for our city, I would like to talk about something else. About the successes of our city hospital with our honorable predecessor, Comrade Lebowski. We introduced, we introduced the new package of the medical insurance for workers of the Klaus Wolfram plant. Now common working people can get medical care in full. Sounds great, Comrade Beckett, but you didn't come here to boast, did you? You're right. We really want to extend the new package to all civil servants of our city, and we can't do it without the city budget. And you're saying that you wouldn't ask for money. Oh, please. I just refuse to exaggerate. We have enough funds for the basis of needs, but it could always be better. Well, sounds reasonable. I'll think about it and let you know my decision in the next few days. Then goodbye, Comrade River. Goodbye, Comrade Beckett. Get up. Ugh, Helen! Comrade River, Jean Kipler, the head of the Livelihood Committee, is here. My god, there are so many of them. I can't keep up with all this stuff. What, what should I answer? Tell her that I'm out for lunch. We'll be done. Dear Comrade River, my name is Maya, and I am 10. I write to you because you are the head of our city. I'm sure you're a very good and very kind man. I don't, wanna ask, I don't want to ask for me, but I ask for tiny animals who live in Iron Wen. They're very sad now because people don't feed them because they have little money. I love puppies and kitties very much, and I always wanted to help them. Can you help them and build a shelter for them? I hope I don't ask too much. I believe we'll help Comrade River because you're a big and kind man. Send me something... As your answer, thank you very much. Oof. Uh, t 
<laughs> rude. Out of the mouth of babes. Animals really need our help. Help the animals! You built a shelter for animals using budget funds, and that pleased little Boehm and other tender-hearted citizens. However, the region committee doesn't approve of such familiar spending of the budget money. I don't care. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not responsible for much. Dear Comrade River, it is not a secret that the ethic question is very acute in Iron One. I am Kentish, you are Corvian. That would be a problem for many of our fellow citizens. But is it really that hard to understand from each other? What's going on? <sighs> Sorry. I don't think so. I think our nations can continue to live in peace. In an effort to emphasize that, I am going to apply for a placing of a monument to Kentish heroes of the Civil War. I designed it especially for a city center. Yes, some of the citizens' reactions will be ambiguous. Many Corvians still think that our heroes fought for independence from the old empire. It is definitely wrong. Kentish revolutionaries such as Stephen and Ben Deere fought for equality and social justice, not worse than Klaus Wolfram himself. That's why I think that my initiative will strengthen the understanding between our nations. The draft of the monument is attached. Okay, have a monument. Permission for the construction of the Kentish Revolutionaries' monument was really questioned by citizens. However, only time would tell. Will the monument fit the citizens' architecture or not? Well, I hope it makes them all happy with each other. Oh, I see the files. They slide into this file folder. Haha. <laughs> Let me introduce myself. I am Harry Johnson, Colonel of the 17th Rifle Division. Retired. I have honorary awards and even a certificate of honor from General Winter's Day himself. I would like to report that I am extremely concerned about the military patriotic training of the young generation of the UPOC. In my day, everyone since childhood knew that they had hard but glorious work to do for the benefit of the commune, and they made sure that they were ready for it. It was so rewarding to watch the trim, neat, and well-dressed young men merrily marching to their weekly volunteer work. And now what? There are slackers, slobs, and layabouts all around. All the modern louts do nothing but hanging out in the residential buildings, playing some guitar rubbish and drinking cheap liquor. If those things happen in my unit, oh, it is useless. Those bastards do not listen to us anymore. A couple of weeks ago, I tried to chase some bad elements away from my residential building but they seized my stick and almost beat me me a garrison service veteran such a disgrace i had to call the police even a retard could figure it out hmm. it's to blame <laughs> for such demoralization we should have looked out for the boys better. We gave them too much spare time, allowed them to walk around in rags, grow hair, listen to some shit music. All of this needs to be stopped. Uh, this man is not allowed your children. Denied. You did not approve Johnson's idea. It seems he has to find another entertainment. Yeah, fuck him. He's annoying. <laughs> he just sounds like a grouchy old dude who doesn't like that people aren't working as hard as he worked. He has no fucking idea. He hasn't sat down and had a conversation with them to see what their life is all about. My name is Claude Genera? Genera? Ooh. And I'm waiting f writing to you about the very sad state of the architectural mon monuments in Iron One. For example, last night I noticed a new big crack in the building of the railway station. This is the fourth crack that appeared in the building since the beginning of this year. Few people know, but our railway station was built by the famous... Corvin architecture muns, and nowadays the building has great cultural value. I've written about the situation to different authorities, many times, but all in vain. At best, they dismiss my requests. At worst, they hint that I am an admirer of the old regime and the black army. But that's not true. Both of my grandfathers fought for the prosperity of the working people. One of them died in the first days of the revolution. But what the political atrocities of the Kaiser Depotism have to do with architecture. How can architecture even be bourgeoisie? Moreover, the destruction of historically valuable buildings may also lead to human casualties. Yes, most of the houses were built to last, but it's been decades since their construction. 
and some buildings have never got major repairs at all. The loss of monuments is a tragedy for art, but the loss of people is a tragedy for everyone. That's why, Comrade River, I suggest you at least plan the repair and restoration works on the oldest buildings in the city. Hmm, sounds reasonable. Uh, I'll send work crew to repaint the railway station. Uh... Um, repainting's not gonna do much. We'll discuss it. We don't necessarily have to agree to anything. You listened to genre and decided to start the renovation of the historic buildings. The project development and implementation will take a lot of time, but the first step was made. Okay, sure. What is it? Who? Helen! Get out. Francis? And who turned up this time, Helen? No one. It's just me. I noticed that you hadn't eaten anything, so I made some oatmeal for you. Aww. Helen, you're embarrassing me. Honestly, you shouldn't have fired that much because of me. Francis, I can't eat one more oatmeal. I have no choice. What? You really know how to con convince a man, Helen. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. So very much. So very much, Helen. Thank you for the oatmeal. Actually, oatmeal sounds pretty good. I like oatmeal. Mm. Ask me anytime. Thanks, Helen. By the way, Helen, you must must have been head over heels in work all day, too. You can take a day off tomorrow. Well, Frances, I'll think it over. Get out. Bye, Helen. See you the day after tomorrow. The party has a mission for your agents. What does that mean? mission goal harassments the ethics committee of the party has received several anonymous messages pointing out the unacceptable behavior of comrade kevin brody the editor of the social development department of the iron herald he has been accused of unpunished harassments towards female interns gross which sometimes leads to utterly obscene actions these accusations are too serious to be ignored but starting an official investigation based on unverified data appears to be undesirable. The party instructs you to address this delicate question, determine the validity of the accusations, and report the collected data to the regional committee. Um. Um. Hmm. Um, there's no guarantee if we send an intern that he'll do grossness. We should talk to, we should talk to them, the, the interns. Um, wait, best suited for the mission. Oh, how do I? Andre... Brasslek? Uh, sure, man. Um, I don't think that this is a good person. Honestly, if it's a harassment suit, you really should send a woman. Catherine Hurst, 22 years old. Kentish, born in Corbington. Medium height, fiery red hair, has a small white scar on her upper lip. Catherine was an ordinary, has an ordinary appearance, but a rather pleasant one. Hurst is a member of the 12th Orion Cell. An activist. She is a student of the Faculty of History, currently on active and leave. Sigmal came to Iron One to visit her family during vacation. She's sociable, easy to easily gets people to like her. With rare exceptions, Catherine is fond of alpine skiing, the area of her scientific interest, the history of ancient coastal republics. Um I can't imagine any the, of these other ones being better. So we're just going to send her. Helen. It's not Helen. Who are you? Oh, Jean Kipler. Hello, Comrade River. My name is Jean Kipler. I'm the head of the Livelihood Committee. Hello, Comrade Kipler. Take a seat. Thank you. Sorry for the wait, Comrade Kipler. I had my lunch. It's all right, Comrade Rivera. I used to wait for weeks when the head of the city committee was Comrade Lebowski. Was he really that busy? He was busy with taking care of his beloved self and the chair, which is now yours, that helped him in his self-passion. I'm really that happy that he is finally thrown. 
It's too bad that the only formal reason is a pension. What reason you'd prefer? Comrade Lebowski was looking for any benefits, whatever he could, even in the restroom, I'm afraid. He would first seek money. I wouldn't say that his work has had any good impact on our town, but it doesn't matter now. Justice is always significant, Comrade Kipler. If only everybody in this country thought the same way, but we have to get to the point. The wear and tear of the municipal heating system is about 40%. We must change pipes now. Otherwise, hundreds of families will remain without heating this winter. Furthermore, the city needs to buy snow clearing equipment for the coming winter season. All right, I'll consider what I can do. You're not the first person today who asks for financing. Thank you, Comrade River. I think you, unlike the predecessor, can really make the right decisions. Goodbye. Goodbye, Comrade Kipper. Get out. Get out, all of you. Out, 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 out. Who? Hello? Oh, does that mean the day's over? So that I just leave? Minus one? Why well, am I at 40%? I'm very confused. Nothing has changed. Okay. I, I lost money. <laughs> but that makes sense for me as a person. Hello? Is this our friend? Emma? Was that her name? Yes, you can imagine. He just left me without explaining anything. No, I don't think that's our redhead lady who's helping us. It's so painful to see all this, this horrible indifference to me. I'm so angry at this ungrateful man. How could he do this to me? Ooh. It's really awful. He shouldn't. Oh, uh, hello. Is this your first time here? Yes, I'm new in town. Nice place. So, you are new here, just like our new head of the city committee. Yes, tis I, Superman. <laughs> I'm suspicious. Then you should try our fresh light beer, it was bought this morning. Yes, thank you. A pint, please. As for the head of the city committee, let me introduce myself, Francis River. So you're... Hello, comrade he head of the city hall. Get off. Back off. You're gross. Get away from me. Sorry for eavesdropping, but <laughs> here's my pinky. Comrade River, that's such, a pl that's such a pleasant meeting. It's mutual. I've always thought that the only el that only the elderly can take up leadership positions. Well, I think you've heard that the party set a course towards the rejuvenation. Emma Dormer, by the way. There's no need to call me formally. Mm, I'll call you formally if I feel like it. <laughs> then call me Frank formally. What makes you so upset? You know, Francis, some men just don't appreciate what we do for them. This is so mean. But let's stop talking about them. I don't want to spoil the evening. Don't drink with her. Get away. Run. Then here's to this evening. Hello? Her face looks so much more fleshed out than everybody else's. <laughs> it's kind of weirding me out. I haven't had such a nice time for a long, for a long? I haven't had such a long, nice time for a long, Frank. Maybe it's worth repeating. Tomorrow, for example. Then at the same time, in the same place? I wish I could choose. No, run away screaming. She seems like bad news. Save, empty slot. All right, thank you everybody for coming out and playing with me. I had a ton of fun. This is, again, a game coming out on the 13th of August. Make sure to wishlist it. And I'm going to give away a copy in my Discord. Mm, I guess the day it comes out would probably be a good time, right? That seems like a good time to give it away. So, join the Discord and make sure to have on your notifications. And I'll give you ample time to join the...
the giveaway if you want a copy of For the People for yourself. Anyway, thank you 101XP for giving me this opportunity. And I will see all you guys next time.